a number of steps. Memorize them. Very simple. The first step in our procedure for tawbah, the first step is that we must repent for the sake of Allah. We don't repent because somebody saw us doing an action. We don't repent because we were caught red-handed. We repent for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second condition is that we must feel guilty in our hearts. Brothers and sisters, feeling guilty is a sign of Iman. Feeling guilty is a sign you have some faith. If you didn't have any faith, you wouldn't feel guilty. So when you feel guilty, at least thank Allah that you have that much Iman that you feel guilty. No doubt if you had higher Iman, you wouldn't even commit the sin in the first place. But to feel guilty is a necessary requirement of repentance. The Prophet Wasallam said, feeling guilty is the essence of tawbah. Feeling guilty is the heart, is the crux of repentance. The third thing that we must do is to seek forgiveness with our tongues like we have with our heart. And we do this by saying, Oh Allah, I have sinned, forgive me. Astaghfirullah, atubu ilallah. Allahumma inna ka'afu wa tuhibbu al-afu wa fa'afu anni. Dozens and dozens of dua. Rabbi ghfirli, Rabbi adhnabtu dhamban faghfirli. So many duas. And if you don't know Arabic, say it in your tongue. Say it in your mother tongue. Allah knows all languages. And Allah Azza wa Jal wants to see your spirit and your heart and not the verbal things that you utter. If you don't know the Arabic, say it in your mother tongue. Oh Allah, I have sinned, forgive me. Oh Allah, you are the forgiving, you are the merciful. If you don't have repentance, if you don't forgive me, there is no other being who can forgive me. So there must be followed up by a verbal act of repentance. The fourth point is that we need to make an intention to stop the sin. If you steal money from somebody, and then you meet him the next and you say, Oh, I'm sorry, I have stolen your money. But in your heart you want to steal more money from them the same day. What type of repentance is this? It is not a full repentance. It is not an admittance of guilt. Rather, you must make an intention not to return to that sin. And it is important to note that you make an intention not to return. If you do return to that sin, that does not disqualify your previous repentance. Because Allah judges by intention. If you return to that sin again, you must repent again. And your first repentance is valid. And if you return a third time, then you repent a third time. And if you return a fourth time, you repent a fourth time. And if you return again and again and again, you repent again and again and again. An infinite cycle until you meet your Lord on the day of judgment. This is a tactic of shaitan, a plot of shaitan, that shaitan sometimes... For example, some of us might be addicted to a sin, whether it's drinking, whether it's taking drugs, whether it's smoking, whatever the sin might be, we're addicted to it. So we repent one day and we feel guilty and we say, Oh Allah, that's it. That is the last drink I will ever have. Never again will I return to that sin. A day goes by, a week goes by, a month goes by, three months go by, and then shaitan comes and you slip and you drink again. You feel guilty, you repent again. And you say, that's it, the last time. This time, instead of three months, you slip in two months. And you go back to the alcohol again. But you return again to repentance. This time, instead of two months, in one month, you return to the alcohol. Now, shaitan comes to you and says, you know what? Forget it. You're not going to be a good Muslim ever. You might as well just drink and enjoy life. Worry about the hereafter later on. Don't worry about repentance now. You're always an evil person. You see, the person was being righteous and good until this thought came to him. Had he died in any of those previous states, Allah would have accepted his repentance. But if he were to die in this state, here is where he would be a major sinner. Let me ask you a question. When a child is learning how to walk, does the child count how often it falls? Does the child fall for the first time? then stand up, second time, then stand up, third time, then says, you know, forget it, I'm never going to learn to walk. I'll crawl as long as I live. Or does the child continually try over and over and over and over again until the child finally perfects the art of walking? And even as an adult, does any amongst us ever not trip? Do we still not trip once in a while? What do we do after we've tripped 10, 20,000 times in our lives? 
Do we just lie in the dust and say, forget it, I'm never going to walk again? Or do we stand up, brush the dust off of ourselves and continue walking? And if we trip again, what do we do? We stand up and we continue walking. Such is the way with repentance. Such is the way with tawbah. Such is the way with istighfar. Allah does not count the number of times you repent. Allah looks at the quality of your tawbah and not the quantity of your tawbah. Allah looks at the quality of your guilt, the quality of your repentance, and not the quantity of the number of times you have asked Him. O Muslims, O Muslims, never lose hope of Allah's forgiveness. The conditions of tawbah, number one, sincerity. Number two, feeling regret and remorse. Number three, seeking Allah's forgiveness verbally. Number four, making an intention never to return to that sin. And there is a fifth condition if the sin involved another human being. If you stole some money, if you backbited about a person, if you slandered a person, then along with these four conditions, you also have to seek forgiveness from that other person. Because you have wronged him and you have also wronged yourself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you have stolen somebody's money, then you must return that money to him. Or if you, you don't know who it was from, you embezzled some funds or something, you must get rid of that money and give it to the poor. Expecting no reward, it's not your money in the first place. But you need to make your right, you need to make your wrong into right again. And that fifth condition is only when you have committed a sin with another person, another human being. Once you perfect your tawbah, what happens? Firstly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes that sin. He erases it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives and He also erases the sin. You see, we forgive but we don't forget. If somebody wrongs you, even if you forgive him, in the back of your mind you remember, he did this to me, he did that to me. And you're always extra cautious. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives and He erases the sin. No sin is left after the repentance. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the one who repents from a sin, it is as if he has never committed the sin in the first place. The one who repents from the sin, it is as if he has never committed the sin in the first place.